So I gotta say, I was pretty pumped about this one right here. Today we're gonna be looking at Paris Corner Vo Elegante. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but that's my best shot right there. And this is part of the Amir collection. So yeah, a Paris Corner. Now, what makes this so special is that it is a Zerzhov Naxos inspired scent. And the reason why that is such a, a special thing here is that a couple of reasons, one of which being Naxos is expensive. I mean, retail price, you're looking at $250, I think, or somewhere around in there for 50 ml. And in terms of discounted price, you can usually get it for under 200, you know, 170, somewhere around in there. But that leads me to my next problem. You can't always get it at discounters. Naxos is the type of scent that will come into stock and usually sell out not long after. Now you guys, if you're keeping up with my community tab and my emailing list, every time it comes in stock, I notify you, but you have to jump on it quick because it will sell out. And I guess I might as well just plug that right now. If you wanna get the best deals on scents and even stuff like this, this is pretty much a brand new launch as far as I can tell or relatively new. And that email went out to my, my mailing list and to my community tab and you guys were able to have first dibs on this. A whole bunch of rare stuff that comes up. I post about it. Low Mediol Extreme, Bulgari Aqua Atlantique most recently, uh, Roberto Cavalli Womo Golden Edition, right? Just all of these things that uh, you may miss out on otherwise, I notify you so you can get them. The emailing list will be linked at the first link down below so you can sign up for that. And I will also link this one down below as well so you can pick it up uh, 100 mil for around $37 as of right now. And so without further ado, we're gonna dive into this scent. I'm gonna tell you how it smells even though I gave it away, but we'll, we'll break down the specifics here. I'll talk about the notes I pick up on and just generally describe how it smells, but I'm also gonna run you through the performance because that's an important part of this. You know, if this is only gonna last three or four hours, that might be uh, enough of a deterrent to where you would just go, okay, I'm just gonna continue to save my money and get another Naxos or put it towards Naxos someday when you're able to do so. So we'll run through all of that. So let's start off with how this one smells. And if you have smelled Naxos before, this is obviously going to be very familiar to you, but let's approach it from the angle of you not having smelled fragrances like this before. And so when you first pull the cap off and maybe you smell it from the dry down, you get this nice kind of dusty, powdery tonka bean mixing with this tobacco accord and uh, just a little bit of sweetness and some woods. But when you spray this one up in the air, on your skin, whatever, you get this really, really nice, syrupy, silky, sweet honey accord that smells amazing. And so what happens is that honey gets incorporated with some cinnamon off the top, a little bit of that tonka bean dustiness and powderiness again, but then a whole heavy dose of this nice red pipe tobacco comes into play. And really at the end of the day, the star of the show with this fragrance and Naxos itself, it's gonna be kind of that tobacco honey combination. And I've gotta tell you guys, this is the type of thing that will stop you dead in your tracks. You know, if you're not used to smelling things like this and you smell it for the first time, it's one of those things that just makes you go, wow, things like this really do exist. You know, I remember when I was first starting out and my, my uh, appeal towards fragrances was so, so narrow and I was only going towards aquatics and freshies and, and overall things that were not all that uh, intense and not all that interesting, so to speak. And so when you start diving into stuff like this, it just opens up a whole new world. So I'm gonna go ahead and run you through the note breakdown here. Um, this is according to pariscornerperfumes.com. So I believe this to be their official website. And uh, let's give it a go. We have cinnamon, lavender, honey, jasmine, bergamot, tobacco, vanilla, cardamom, lemon, cashmere, and tonka bean. So I already kind of listed off the notes that I get the most there. It's gonna be essentially the warm spices and the honey and, and the, the tobacco and that sort of thing, right? And cardamom is actually a note that I didn't really pick up on initially, and I still don't get a ton of. Uh, what I really do pick up on that you can pinpoint and separate easily in terms of the warm spices is that cinnamon accord, and I'll give it one more spray up in the air just to catch it again. I mean, it's 
it's right there. It stands out a lot and it smells great. It really gives it this nice kind of almost gourmand aspect to the scent overall to help break it up and make it a little bit more digestible. You know, it's a familiar note that kind of grounds the scent, so to speak, so you're not getting overwhelmed with all of the tobacco and all of the honey, which those by themselves could turn this into a very syrupy sweet scent. And so there's balance here. Let's see, what else do we have? So the notes I don't get as much of are going to be like your jasmine, your lemon, your bergamot, the, that sort of thing. Essentially, the fresh balances here. Now, not for nothing, I would say that those probably do serve a purpose in this to kind of give you the impression of that freshness. But when we're talking about notes that you actively pick up on, for me, I just don't really get a whole lot of those. Uh, there's also cashmere as well, and same deal, not really getting it. Generally though, I would say in a lot of fragrances these days, cashmere and ISO E Super and even Ambroxan, those aroma chemicals are being used all over the place and you may not know it. So it's probably just adding a little bit of a woody substance to the base, although again, it's not a main player. So this is all about those nice sweet heavy dusty notes you know the vanilla is giving off a creaminess you're getting a dustiness from the tonka bean getting a nice kind of smoky red pipe tobacco smell and then a syrupy sweetness from the honey and then you also have that warm spice up top to kind of wrap everything up and, and give it a nice warm comforting smell you know there's nothing abrasive about this there's nothing overwhelming about this to me you know i think it's very well executed and same goes for naxos and we'll get into that now how close is this to the zerzhov it is very close and it, it I, like i've said before these clones are getting so impressive. It seems like within the past couple years, they've continued to evolve and they're getting to the point where it is downright crazy. Especially when you're looking at being able to pick this one up for under $40, that is pretty impressive to me. Now, is the presentation as good as the Zerzhov? No. Probably not, however, I do have to admit it is very solid. Frosted glass and heavy glass. I need to bring a scale down here and start weighing out these bottles and, and throw up some benchmark comparisons because this is significantly heavier than a lot of my other fragrances, even designers and even niche, like this is heavier than a Creed bottle. Kind of has weight similar to that of a Parfums de Marly, although it's not top heavy like the PDMs, the weight is actually coming from the bottle itself. Like I said, very thick frosted glass. The cap is kind of a, a press fit, um, but it, it does the job fine. And just nice details, you know, it looks nice and really it looks more expensive than a $37 scent, at least to me, and especially the feel. So the quality of the scent, you know, it's not gonna be as good as Niche and as Zerzhov's and that sort of thing, but it really gives a lot of other fragrances in this price range a run for their money. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about performance now. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration. Longevity on my skin has been a very consistent 10 hour performer, and that is amazing. Zerzhov Naxos itself is already very strong. It's one of the main, you know, kind of uh, buying points for that one, you know. It's one of the ways people justify it is it does have really good performance, and so you are getting that out of it. And that can't be said about all niche fragrances and expensive ones can't be said about all expensive designers either just one of those deals but this one here can kind of hold up a little bit uh, compared to the Zerzhov and honestly in terms of clones this is definitely on the above average end in terms of performance talking about clones and generally a lot of the clones that they've been putting out lately do perform pretty good but this one is definitely next level i mean when you get to that 10 hour mark and sometimes a bit beyond it is crazy at that point and what more do you need it also has decent projection but more so i want to highlight the scent trail and just kind of the sillage i guess and the hang time is generally how i describe it i mean i've sprayed this up in the air a couple times throughout the videos you've seen and i can still smell it it's not on my skin at all right now it's not on anything else let's just spraying it up in the air and I can smell it with ease and I would know what it is. Like it's still very much Naxos smelling in here just from a couple sprays in the air. So you can imagine if you have this one on your skin and preferably you have it on some pulse points and you're walking through a room, it's gonna cast that scent trail and it's gonna hang in the air for a long time. It's very dense and so this one definitely uh, kind of excels in that category. Now don't get me wrong, projection distance wise is decent but it's really all about that hang time. 
Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me, guys. Vo Elegante by Paris Corner. You know, Paris Corner's been putting out some really, really great things. Uh, their Sadrat Boise clone is really good. And for that matter, their Mansara clones are really good. I have a few of them. And uh, the list goes on. They have a Fire Your Desire, which is an Angel's Share clone by Killian. Just a ton of them that have been really, really good. And I don't think I've had a single miss in terms of what I've checked out from them. And by that, I just mean none of them have sucked yet. So, you know, this one is definitely one to add to the books where you should pick it up if you want Naxos on a budget. I would imagine this is going to start to become kind of a hype monster, maybe not to the level of the Angel Share clones like Latafa Kamra, but it could be. And so if you're interested, I would get one now before they run out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.